This is a presentation on how to measure pulses and switch closure with your Arduino or other microcontroller that you might be using to do your own uh, weather, build your own weather station or do your own environmental work. And where we see um, the need to measure pulses and switch closure is mainly on two sensors and that's cup anemometers which are commonly used to measure wind speed of course and your tipping bucket rain gauge to measure precipitation. So if we look at um, our learning goals for today we want to learn how to read sensors that output electrical pulses you know not a voltage it's not a digital signal it's a pulse uh, we want to add uh, what we call software hardware debouncing to clean up that signal and we want to verify that we can measure the RPM of a cup anemometer properly can we really do it and test that with some independent measurement technique so the concepts that we want to learn are the tipping bucket rain gauge and anemometers how they work talk about magnetic read switches interrupt service routines that's software related hardware and software debouncing again to clean up that signal and you know this is also related to push buttons so you know push button is something we could also add to the list here and that oftentimes you want to build a really simple user interface uh, for your system and you want the user to be able to press a button to initiate some kind of process uh, this principle of of uh, measuring switch closure applies to that as well so again if we look at our typical weather station there's two instruments that are going to generate pulses in many cases the cup anemometer and the tipping bucket rain gauge so a tipping bucket rain gauge many of you probably know how they work but if you don't um, you know basically a rain gauge is a funnel that directs the water downward toward a little um, device a uh, clever device actually I think uh, that fills up it's like a teeter-totter uh, it fills up one side with water when the mass of the water uh, reaches a certain level it tips over to the other side uh, where then it starts filling up the other side of the of the reservoir and tips back and forth so you get a tip for every you know let's say tenth of an inch of water or hundredth of an inch of water they come in all kinds of different um, uh, levels of precision so many many rain gauges around the country operate in this fashion so what you get is the um, a magnet which is often attached to the uh, to this uh, tipping device um, each time it tips it goes past a reed switch which you can see there in the rightmost diagram and that reed switch then closes momentarily just as the magnet passes by just be like you flipping a switch off and on real quickly and that creates a little switch closure and your Arduino or other microcontroller has to read that has to recognize that um, and as you might suspect it's a software issue as well because the the anemometer might be or the excuse me the Arduino might be busy doing something else like reading humidity or temperature or something when this occurs so your system has to interrupt whatever is going on and uh, go back here and measure the switch closure so that's why we use this interrupt service routine that we're going to talk about in the software remember that it's really important when you think about modern instrumentation to be thinking about the software and the hardware at the same time they're very interrelated now tipping bucket rain gauges can be pretty expensive uh, research grade tipping bucket might cost over a thousand dollars but there's a couple of low-cost rain gauges that a lot of hobbyists use and a lot of um, low-cost uh, people that do do-it-yourself research try to use one's the Davis Aerocone for $75 I think it's a pretty darn good instrument for $75 and it's mass produced in large numbers that's why the cost is reasonable it does have a lot of plastic parts on it but that's okay they work pretty well uh, if you if that's too expensive we have something like the ambient weather gauge which is all the way down to $15 and this is a pretty good little uh, rain gauge it still uses the tipping bucket concept uh, one thing is you'll notice that funnel up there on the top has kind of a narrow lip on it and um, a lot of people will 3d print a little um, extender that kind of slips onto that and um, extends the lip up and gives it sort of a bigger deeper funnel and uh, I'll try to show that in a later video how you can modify this little tipping bucket rain gauge to get pretty good results so again both of these and, and many other tipping buckets work
by uh, this concept of a magnetic reed switch. See some examples there on the right. That's bolted inside that tipping bucket. There's a little stick on magnet on the tip on the bucket. When the bucket passes by, uh, the magnet uh, ma passes by the reed switch. The reed switch closes momentarily and we've got to read that. So when you're reading a tipping bucket, it's like reading a, a, a switch closure. So in this little example, I, here's an Uno, uh, and I've just got a little momentary spring-loaded switch uh, placed in there um, in place of the rain gauge. So in theory, every time you pressed that little switch down, it would be like a tip of the rain gauge. And you can see over here on the right, you see the little, um, what we would expect, this little sort of high signal, low signal, high signal, low signal. Uh, and you'd have to read each one of those transitions. Now, unfortunately, in the real world, the um, signal that's coming back to your Uno or your Arduino, it doesn't look like this signal on the right. It often looks more like this. Uh, it's noisy. So here you see on the left, it starts out high and then but then as soon as uh, it's closed there's all this noise down here you see it along the bottom and then when it re recoils back to its other position we get all these spikes so what would happen is um, if you pressed the uh, remember the Arduino or the is looking for these transitions these these changes and so instead of recording one tip it might record 10 tips okay just because of all this noise and that's a really common problem uh, and so to fix that we have to do something called debouncing debouncing a switch so there's two kinds of debouncing uh, one's called software and that's the most common approach used where we use an internal timer in the microprocessor uh, to time the interval between changes if the successive changes are too close together in time they're likely caused by a bounce and they're ignored. For rain gauges, we often set that to something like 300 milliseconds. For anemometers, maybe 10, 5, 20 milliseconds. You can also debounce the circuit with just hardware, with just electronics, by putting a resistor and a capacitor in, in, or using something called a Schmidt trigger. That used to be really common, uh, but it seems like lately most of us have switched to software debouncing as, as uh, microprocessors and things have gotten faster. Uh, most people use software debouncing these days. So again, your Arduino or whatever microcontroller you're using has to be able to sense that tip whenever it occurs. And it's not, it can't sit there in the software and wait to listen for a tip, right? Because while it's doing something else, you know, reading radiation, reading humidity, temperature, soil moisture, doing something else, a tip might happen and you might miss it. You don't want that. So um, in both the case of anemometers and rain gauge, we use something called an interrupt service routine. Often you see that depicted as ISR. And um, so the Arduino Uno with the Atmega 328 has two external interrupt pins. Interrupt zero, each interrupt has its own number. Interrupt zero is linked to pin two. Interrupt one is linked to pin three. Okay, and if you're using some other microcontroller, just look at the documentation, look up interrupts, uh, interrupt pins, hardware interrupts, something of that nature, and you'll be able to figure out how the interrupts are numbered and what digital pins you should use for that signal. So that tells us here that we need to wire, let's say if we had a rain gauge and we had an anemometer on the same Arduino, we would need to reserve digital pin 2 and digital pin 3 for those sensors, right? That's because we only have two. Um, when the external interrupt is triggered, so when the, the tipping bucket tips, it's going to interrupt the processor and stop whatever it's doing and go down to a subroutine and execute whatever in that interrupt. And I'm going to do another video where I get into the code a little bit more and show you how to do that. So, so look for that on my YouTube channel. So let's, there's a, I, I posted some examples um, that are available on GitHub where you can try some of these things. Here you see how simple the setup is here. You just take some kind of switch, could be a toggle switch, spring-loaded switch. I'm using a little 
um, spring-loaded lever switch here. A lot of us have those laying around from our 3D printing activities. Uh, and you can just hook them up there. I've got it hooked up just to uh, ground and, and one of the interrupt pins. And I can sit there and test my code to see how it's working. See if I'm getting, when I click that lever, do I get one tick? Do I get lots of ticks? Is my software debouncing working? There's a lot of good tutorials on using interrupts. So go out there on the web and look those up. Here's some nice ones from Adafruit showing you how to use the interrupt. Another place that the interrupt is often used is with the button press, right? Those little momentary buttons that a lot of us sometimes use on our projects as part of a user interface. You can, uh, this same interrupt service routine concept applies. Okay, so another great, another great tool you have available once you learn to use interrupt service routines. Um, and, and debounce switches. So another sensor of course that, that generates pulses is the uh, cup anemometer. Uh, it's going to generate a lot of pulses obviously. It's going to be spending a good bit of the time. Uh, those anemometers can be also can be very expensive. Even cup anemometers can cost eight or nine hundred dollars. Um, they, they work on the same principle in that sometimes uh, as you see there on the left there's a there's just a little um, magnet and a reed switch and every time uh, the uh, uh, rotating magnet goes past the reed switch it triggers the circuit and so you get a pulse one pulse per every revolution of the cup anemometer. Now some anemometers generate a lot more pulses per revolution and that increases the resolution of the measurement like some will even generate up to 10 pulses per revolution. But on the measurement end on your Arduino end it's all the same. But this one anemometer I really like that I think is a really good buy. You get a really pretty darn good instrument for the price is the in-speed vortex cup anemometer. I think that's a nice choice for hobbyists uh, and other kind of do-it-yourselfers uh, and, and people trying to do low-cost research. Gives you darn near research grade, I would even say research grade measurements for $55. Pretty amazing. I think it's almost impossible to build one that good yourself even if you're a good machinist. Um, I think I would just buy one. And other ones that are out there that you see quite a bit around are the Davis anemometer and wind vane combination. Another one that generates pulses. Uh, the ambient weather or the argent is a really low cost cup anemometer so if you're a student or somebody that's just wanting to learn how to do these things or build your own backyard weather station you can buy one of these and, and you know they work pretty pretty good I wouldn't call these research grade but they give you pretty darn good results for fifteen dollars again I think it's pretty hard to build that yourself or 3d print that something that strong that would last um, now you can start like I said you can go way up and get a super expensive anemometers um, but here's one that I think is kind of a middle of the road anemometer and wind vane setup is this one from Nova Links we use this sometimes in our research and and for $225 you get really a lot a really good anemometer and a really good wind vane so if you're you know if you're putting in a long-term weather station but you still want to keep your cost down this might be a good choice also you also often see this Argent um, weather uh, system combination that's sold by Spark Fund and many others. For $76 you get a wind vane, a, a, a cup anemometer, and a little tipping bucket rain gauge. So that's another cool option if you're trying to get into weather measurement. Uh, you can 3D print uh, some of these devices. I have one on my Thingiverse channel. It's a, I think the wind vane is, is easier to do than the cup anemometer. So here you see on the right my homemade 3D printed wind vane which is very accurate and uh, gives you good results. That can be built for about $15. So you combine that let's say with the uh, uh, with one of the other anemometers maybe the $55 one um, and uh, and you got a really good combination for you know $60, $70 you've got research grade uh, instruments. Now Every anemometer has its own calibration and the calibration usually is given in miles per hour per pulse per second. Okay, So you have to measure the pulse per second with your Arduino or other microcontroller and multiply it by this calibration factor. Okay, And 
you got to know what that is. That's usually given in the documentation. Here you can see an example here over on the on the uh, left, uh, where it's in this case it's giving meters per second, which is our SI unit, and we can see that um, we get that nice linear relationship between velocity of the air and the frequency or pulses per second. Okay, so your interrupt service routine, which I'm going to show in a later video, has to measure pulses per second and then uh, multiply it by the calibration coefficient to get your wind speed either in miles per hour or meters per second. So good things to try would be to um, you know try to some, try some of the examples that I have posted um, if you're taking the class formally those will be on canvas if you're just looking at this um, on on the web then these, these should also be on my github page um, make sure you have the correct calibration value for your anemometer and I really encourage you to verify that your Arduino or other microcontroller is measuring the RPM correctly using a tachometer so what you do is you set this uh, this little setup here I've got shown here with the Arduino and the uh, and the anemometer you got that connected to your laptop or computer you turn a fan on that thing so you got it spinning your Arduino is saying okay I think it's generating this many pulses per second I think it's this many miles per hour uh, what you do is you put a little piece of reflective tape on the hub of the anemometer so that little reflective tape goes by every one revolution and then you you read that reflective tape with one of these low-cost tachometers okay and it's just very satisfying to to, uh, to fire up your system build it get it running get all your code working and then say okay the Arduino says the revolutions per minute or the frequency is um, eight pulses per second and uh, or or you know um, 460 or something 480 pulses uh, per minute and my tachometer also says I'm getting 480 pulses per minute right and you can sort of you what you do is you this has a little laser in there you point that at the reflective tape and it counts every time the tape goes by you see there on the right somebody a machinist doing that with a RPM of a, some kind of a motor or spindle um, you just do the same thing with your anemometer so this is a really handy little tool some of you might already have these for your working on your cars or your neighbor might have one or something or you can borrow one from someone um, great thing to do because remember if you don't debounce your anemometer correctly um, it'll look like it's working but it might be off by quite a bit it might be overestimating the wind speed kind of severely so uh, it's really important to verify in some way um, that the RPMs that you're measuring with your Arduino is the same uh, RPMs you're actually seeing at the anemometer so I'm going to stop there I think that's a good uh, good time to stop and uh, watch for another video uh, on how to uh, uh, work with the code and I'll show some video of me actually working with a rain gauge and anemometer for you to look at. Thanks.